The Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, has pledged to help households with soaring living costs when he makes his spring statement on Wednesday. If the in the coming months, if nothing is done, millions of people, up to 10 million people, in my view, could be pushed into fuel poverty. Well, Martin, you tweeted uh, that you were nearly out of tools to help people and that the government must intervene with political action. And joining us now, Conservative MP Robert Halfen, um, who liked one of your tweets on this. He said that the fuel price surge could mean a de facto lockdown with people unable to afford petrol to get to work. Now, Robert Halfen, um, you are the chair of the Education Select Committee and you are also talking to your constituents and you're getting this story directly from parents, aren't you? That petrol well, that's is so expensive that now they have to choose whether to even take their children to school. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, I've been campaigning on fuel duty for the 11 plus years I've been a member of a part of Parliament. I'm glad the government have frozen it in all that time, but I genuinely have never seen uh, the hardship and the real fear uh, that there is from my constituents uh, because of ever rising prices, particularly with petrol and diesel, and of course our our energy bills. People are terrified, I and mean, I get emails and messages all the time. People sending me photographs of the prices of fuel at petrol stations. I'm mean, Previously, I started campaigning on this because there were stories of constituents who were sleeping in car parks overnight because they couldn't afford to uh, commute, uh, do the motoring commute. And that was when fuel prices were much lower. Yeah. Now there are, as you've said, 168, 178, 190, depends on where, where you go. And this is literally unaffordable for millions of working people. Well, the, the, the talk is that the Chancellor will cut fuel duty by 5p. That's what the papers are saying. Is that enough, in your view? Well, I, I would welcome, of course, anything that the Chancellor does. 5p is, would be helpful. Um, I note that the Irish have done it uh, much more than that. Perhaps we could be more uh, uh, generous, because, as, as you've highlighted, um, fuel isn't just about motorists, it actually feeds into every part of our life. It also affects our public services. Instead of the NHS spending more on doctors and nurses, they're paying more for all their vehicles. Mm. Instead of more police officers, they're having to pay more fuel costs and energy costs for their vehicles. Schools have just got an increased budget, yet that is going uh, to pay their energy bill. So this must be a priority for uh, the government. It's the single most important issue uh, domestically uh, facing our nation. Uh, you talk about people being in effective lockdown mm. due to petrol prices. Well, of course, that leaves them at home. And if they're at home, there are energy bills. Uh, and I have to say, well, well I think fuel is, is, is pretty disastrous at the moment. Energy is even worse. Mm. The, the help from the Chancellor so far is 150 quid of cash and a £200 loan, not loan, that people will be getting later in the year it's likely that energy bills are going to be rising £1,300 year on year. So that's... Even if you were to count that loan as cash, which it isn't, in a way, but uh, it's 350 quid out of £1,300. Simply not enough for the men, many people on the lowest and low to medium incomes. How does it work as a Conservative backbencher when you are clearly going to be getting, if your mailbag is anything like mine, desperate people who are struggling to, to feed their children at mm -hmm. the moment? How much pressure can you put on the Chancellor? Will you put pressure on the Chancellor or will you sit there and, and, and keep shtum about the energy bills and whatever he does in the spring statement? Well, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I haven't just spoken out about fuel duty. Um, I've also spoken frequently about energy bills. And I welcome, of course, the £9 billion. And that's, again, taxpayers' money. The government has spent trying to reduce energy bills. That helps a little. Um, but what I'd like them to do, they have to go further. And I'd also... Um, like the government to look at the green levies, because we know that these levies are 25% of our electricity bills. They have an impact on our gas bills as well. So that would make a significant difference. I've argued in the past that the government should look at VAT on energy bills. I realise that would be £100. That's not going to make a massive dent. But um, as the saying goes, every little helps. So there are things that the, the government can do. I do speak out on this because of what, hap what I hear for my uh, constituents. And the fuel duty to me, though, is, is perhaps the biggest battle because of the tr everybody depends on their 
on their car. It's impacting businesses, as I say, frontline public services, and uh, um, it's may having a huge impact. And people are literally terrified and are, are not sure whether they can afford to go to work. No, not, not everybody depends on that. There are many people who don't have cars, but almost everybody does have an energy bill, which is probably why I'd prioritise that ahead, in my view. So th that's what you would like to see happen. Mm. What do you think will happen? What are we going to see well, in the I spring just say, just say people who don't use their cars, they, often they use buses. The bus prices have gone up because of the cost of... Yeah. All the food prices have gone up because of the trans, increased transportation costs as well as energy bills. So that's why I say it impacts everyone. But... It, it, you're right, absolutely. Both energy bills and uh, fuel costs are... It, we're, at the moment, households are facing a triple whammy, whether it's energy, fuel and other household bills uh, going up. So, as I say, I'd like them to um, look at the green levies in terms of energy bills. The government have saved £4 billion by cutting overseas aid. Um, there's £4 billion that could be used to cut taxes for the uh, lower paid. I think that would be uh, something that would make a difference as well. Also, of course, there's an increase in national insurance contributions, which is uh, on the cards. Do you think Rishi Sunak will respond to calls uh, to... Well, we know that it's very unlikely he's going to get rid of that altogether, but might he move the threshold on that? Well, this is a frying pan or fire issue. It's a very difficult one for me because the idea of the NI rise was to raise money for the NHS. There's supposed to be £30 billion extra for the NHS, including on, on social care. So the government should try and find the £30 billion elsewhere, but that's not easy. But I, I think the idea that you would uh, raise the threshold in which people have to pay uh, national insurers, I think that's the right one, because if you can at least um, make sure that the lower paid don't have to bear these costs, I think that would make a huge difference. So just, uh, just to explain to people what that means, Currently, you start to uh, pay national insurance at earnings of around £9,600 a year. You start to pay income tax at £12,570 a year. So if you were to lift the amount that people start to pay national insurance, let's say to £11,000, not only does that take people out of paying some national insurance, but also because of that gap, it reduces the total amount everybody pays. Mm -hmm. And so for some on lower incomes, it could reduce it by the amount they're increasing the rate. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the concept. Although the, the problem is, as I'm explaining it to you, the fact that it's taking me a minute to explain it to you means it isn't as politically attractive mm -hmm. for the Chancellor because people won't understand viscerally what it means, whereas cutting 5p on fuel duty is much easier. Also, it, Robert, I was just going to say, why should those at the lower end of earnings experience any rise at all? Well, ideally, they, they wouldn't. And um, I, if there is another way, I'd love the government to scrap the NI rise. But there is the issue, and I think we have to be honest here, we do need to spend more money on the NHS. There is an umbilical cord between the British People and National Health Service. And so we have to find 30-odd billion to pay for NHS and social care. So that's why it's, that particular uh, tax has always been a frying pan or fire issue for me. I hope very much the Chancellor does something. Um, they say that there are increased tax receipt receipts of around £12 billion. It may be that um, they can get rid of this, this tax, but if they're going to do something, at least focus on the lower paid. And one answer to Martin's uh, point about whether people would know about it or not, first of all, it's important we do it, whether it's political or not. But the second thing is that people, the, the Treasury could put it on the wage slips of people so that they would know uh, that they were getting this, uh, um, in essence, um, they would the, tax, the threshold was raised and the national insurance threshold was ra was raised. It's interesting. It'll be interesting to see if they put on the wage slips the fact that national insurance is going up by ten percent as well. Uh, I'm, I'm not necessarily sure we'll see that I think one happen. People was, well, people will know about it sadly and feel it in their wallets. That, well, they'll definitely know about it when they feel it. Yeah, Robert Halfen, um, thank you very much indeed, the chair of the Education Select Committee, uh, the Conservative MP. Uh, good to talk to you this morning.